So mm -hmm. I'm gonna have you do the saying first. Okay. Name, Fine. son. What I like to do. What your role. What my role yeah. is. What you like to do and what you think about friendship. Okay. Yes, hair flowing. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. You can just say it. My name is Alana Marie. I'm a cancer. Um, I am a branding and lifestyle photographer and influencer. Um, I am an ambivert. I've learned through COVID that I actually like being at the house with my husband and my two kids. I have a 14 year old and a 10 month old. And what friendship means to me, um, I'm always telling people like being on this earth, we are a communal folk. Um, we have to go through life with people and I value friendships and I need people in my life to serve different purposes. <laughs> and now that I'm married, I value my friendships a whole lot more. <laughs> Girl. Because there's certain things and conversations that I need to have with, with women who get me. And so mm -hmm. um, it's just one of those, you know, relationships that um, we need to prioritize. I absolutely agree. And so you and I, I feel like we've been connected for a long time, but it was, it was mainly from social, right? Mm -hmm. Like we just met for the first time this year once yeah. I moved to Dallas, but I was so excited to see you. I didn't know I was gonna go to that event. So when I went and I saw you, I was like, oh my God, I was meant to be here. Cause I, I wanted to meet you. Mm -hmm. I knew you lived here. Mm -hmm. um, and so you, I don't know how we started talking about the fact that you had a friendship breakup, but I was like, will you participate? You just reached out to me and I'm like, this is hella <laughs> random, but yes I do. Oh, you, you know why? Because I had to shoot in Dallas. So I'm oh, like, I gotta, my, yeah. so I was like, let me just ask her. Yeah. The fact that you did, yeah, and, very and, recent, yeah. and you asked your you asked your friend if she participated, and she is that's crazy. Mm -hmm. And so you've told me though, y'all have never had a breakup before. So mm -hmm. this one recently, the first one, and y'all have been friends for how long? Since '07. So at the time of our breakup, we were friends for 15 years. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So what 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 are some of the things that kind of led up to you sending the message for the dissolution which is what, what you call it which i think is brilliant yeah right? so i had just moved to dallas in, in may of 2020 she had been in dallas a year before me mm -hmm. um i was super super excited to be here the house that i yeah. moved into was literally an exit from hers um but i noticed like once i did move here and we started like reconnecting and being around each other like my friend is is changing she's evolving she's changing um and also at the same time her and her husband at the time were divorcing um which i tried to like in my mind like that has nothing to do with me like this is a separate relationship but of course that is going to impact the other relationships around you um and things were just just different and like I, my friend is changing her viewpoints are changing and it was it felt like a difference in value and alignment and so over time i noticed that our friendship started to become more about the kids um that is my daughter's godmother um and she had a two-year-old at the time and it was more like hey can you do my daughter's hair hey can you take him to daycare um because i'm always going to be like regardless of what's going on the kids yeah. are the kids and i felt like that's just kind of what it became so i'm noticing the shift but like nothing had necessarily happened mm, and i felt okay. like, I like I'm, I'm trying Okay. I noticed like I'm, I'm trying, um, but it's weird because also while they're going through a divorce, he's also my friend. And so mm -hmm. when you when you're close with these couples, it's a ripple effect on the couples that are around you. Right. Um, and so my husband is like, I don't want them to do none of that. Like, let me know if we need to keep the baby. That's fine. Um, so leading into the actual breakup, I noticed like she was becoming more distant, like the communication that was there was more me reaching out. She was very like short not disrespectful mm -hmm. or anything like that but you can just kind of tell when yeah. like the vibes is off right let me ask you was it over like what period of time was it over because sometimes it's like okay is yeah. it just this moment or you noticed no. over a period of time over a period of time so i moved in 2020 may of 2020 her and her husband uh, had initiated their divorce in july of 2020 mm, okay. and so we didn't dissolve our relationship until august of 2021 so okay. this is over the course of a year gotcha but as okay, far as like feeling um like something was off, I would say like spring of 2021 until the day of the actual dissolution. Okay. So I hadn't seen her in person since June of 2021. Um, and then we dissolved in August. So that was, I hadn't seen her in two months. Mm, okay. Uh, which was very rare. Again, I'm down the street. Right. Um, and like, we didn't really hang out. We connect, we communicated here and there, but I just noticed like the vibes were getting off what was the what were the feelings or the thoughts leading up to the text because th did you think that you were going to do that would yeah. you have questions about it 
so um we had like heart to hearts before but it had like we, it wasn't like an argument so even in the midst of like her going through the divorce and just some of like the ways that she was behaving or in my perception yeah. of how she was behaving i know how i had reached out to her i was like hey like I'm having a hard time supporting you in this way. Like, I just want to let you know what's going on with me because like, I'm, I'm genuinely concerned. Yeah. Right. And she's just like, you know, I don't, I don't really need your support in this way. So we've had like hard time, but it wasn't a debate and argument. It was right, me right. clearing my head, her clearing her head. And I'm like, okay, so this is something that a boundary that I need to set forth. But like, again, this is still my friend. Right. So my husband is like, I, I don't want to like, again, I don't want them to do none of that. Right. Um, and so leading into the actual dissolution, me and my daughter were out to lunch and my um, film that I was working on, I was on that Instagram's page. When I was on that Instagram page, I had noticed that her stories popped up first. So I'm like, hmm, like, cause I noticed on my personal page, I wasn't seeing any story. So I'm like, I don't even know what's, you know, what's going on. I don't know right. what she's doing. So I flip back to my personal page and I noticed like, okay, I don't have, like, there's nothing going on. So I'm thinking to myself, like, this girl didn't block me. Like, we hadn't had a conversation. Like, I, again, I hadn't seen her since June. Right. Um, so I had texted her and I was like, hey, I noticed like I'm blocked from your IG. Like, is everything okay? She was like, yeah, I'm just, you know, learning. I have to make certain decisions. Like, I'm, I'm ha having to like move different. I just had to make some hard decisions. So I'm like, okay mm -hmm. um and i'm like do we need to have a conversation and she was like i don't know like do we and i'm just like mm, i feel the way yeah um yeah. because like we we have conversations like but again in my mind nothing has happened for that so i'm right. like cool um and so she was like well i'll tell you what like give it some time she was like i'm gonna go to therapy i'm gonna talk to my therapist like you know reconnect and we can have a conversation so a week passes and i don't hear from her um, and so at that seven day, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna just make the decision because like I'm, I'm feeling yes, it. And up until that point, yes. I felt like I was forcing it. Like in my mind, I keep saying like, that's my friend. Like, like I know they're going through this, but like, that's my friend. Like, I know I don't necessarily agree with this, but like, that's, that's my friend. friend. Yeah. Um, and so it, it felt very draining. And again, like the signs were there again, you know, we're not hanging out. We're not going anywhere together. I haven't been to your house. Like, yeah. and then with my daughter, I'm like, it's more so favors. Like, you're not really, I don't feel like you're present. You haven't been present. Like I just kept feeling like I was making yeah. excuses. Um, and so I text her and was like, hey, um, I know you said you needed some time, but I feel like I need to go ahead and say this. Um, I think it is best if me and you go ahead and dissolve our friendship. Like I respect you. Um, I'm wishing for the best for you in, in the, the work that you're doing. She was practicing being a doula. Uh, and I'm like, I, I admire the work you're doing for black women and maternal yeah. health. Like I, I wish the best for you, but as far as us, I think we just need to go ahead and end it. Yeah. And so she hearts the message. So I'm like, okay, like I feel, you know, I feel, I, I never done that before. Um, yeah. And so I, can, I was going back and forth. Like, do I text her? Do I call her? I was like, no, I'm just, I'm the type of person, like I need to get all my thoughts yeah through. i gotta write it out mm -hmm. i need to write it out mm -hmm. and so and then I, I read it a few times and then i pressed send so she hearts the message um and so i remember like after that message she sends me like a voice note and was like hey i'm on a date right now um he wants to know where can he find your husband's tequila so my husband is a co-owner of a yes. tequila brand and i'm thinking to myself did this have to just add inquire about this black in the same conversation that we're having this dissolution right. so my i went over the top like i just i was i was pissed and so yeah. it was that and then it was okay i respect your decision i still want to have a relationship with my goddaughter and i was like absolutely not yeah. absolutely not yeah. like and so i then after that i just i deleted the number i blocked it i was like i'm not even about to go back and forth like i was very i was hurt um because it felt like it was dismissed right like yeah i'm curious after that mm -hmm. like what did you do with all those feelings right because she called my therapist a, okay. <laughs> yeah i called my therapist uh I, I love her she's she's been around for three years now and mind you also during this time i was diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder that i felt like she wasn't present for we were diagnosed with infertility that I felt like she wasn't present for. And so like, I'm already navigating those spaces yeah. where I feel like you supposed to be here. Yeah. And like, yeah. this is very like petty to me. I was, I was very, very angry. And so even my husband was like, I, you have a right to be angry. But with Addie, my daughter, he was like, I felt like that was a lot. And so I just looked at him and he was like, I'm gonna just leave it alone. But I was, I was upset. Cause in my mind, I'm like, how can, 
keep, keep I, separate them, yeah right? how can like, i allow this relationship and we're not yeah in a, in yeah. a good space and so i processed with that and then i just didn't um we didn't we didn't talk we didn't talk with we'll each other for a year how, how did how was that year for you when it came to other friendships like <sighs> It was hard because everybody knew us as together. So we had we went to the same college. We were roommates. Um, that's my daughter's godmother. So everybody knew us together. And so I have a large college network down here. And so people would ask, like people would see like, you know, she's not on your Instagram, right. not on her people Instagram. People be keeping that stuff. It's crazy. They do. And so if they see her, like how's Alana? If they see me, how's her? And I'm just like, we don't we don't talk. And they're like, what happened? And I would always say like nothing happened yeah. but then i would also feel like damn i wish something would have happened it, because it makes it, it, my, it, it, makes it easier yeah. to justify yes exactly. i wish she would have done something to like betray me or you know but it wasn't that it was literally like i felt like our values no longer aligned and we just did not need to be friends at that mm. moment and that made me very i grieved hard i i feel like that's such a a, a great way to move into the fact that you all got back together because mm -hmm. you know in the fact that you all you know we you've told me like you all at a wedding and then mm -hmm. you know you all ended up having a conversation do your values align now i think it's it's a we've gotten to the point where those boundaries are in place and so when we have conversations about like what do you desire in a friend and, and she'll even ask me like well what do you need from me what do you want moving forward and i'm just like that's a very good question you know some things like i probably wouldn't call her for you know now that i would probably call her for a pass and vice versa um like i i don't i don't know that's a that's a good question you all to, after you all you know mm -hmm. you all had this conversation at a wedding that yeah. you all were both at like how did and when, what year was this by the way this was in 2020 october 2022 okay so last year right so yeah. how have things evolved since you all first reconnected yeah it still feels very fresh um when people ask me i'm like when we're together because i've seen her maybe like five or six times since then because um, she's moved back to our hometown um, but like when we're together it feels like old times mm -hmm. um she goes by a different name now but it, it doesn't feel much different yeah. um we still go back to like sending memes to each other like that was our thing like Aww. the inside jokes like we speak in in song lyrics and in, in in movie quotes like that's our thing our yeah. cadence like our mannerisms yeah. are very similar <laughs> so that, that still feels y the same yeah um and so I'm, I'm still taking it slow it's minimal expectations like i don't have a lot of expectations it's kind of like the dating scene where you're running to see where this goes like yeah people like do real. you want to get married i'm like i'm i'm having fun right. like, I'm, I'm, that's what y'all are doing yeah i'm learning this new person yeah that that's i feel like that's really beautiful like i'm i'm curious how that is for you mm -hmm. you know like is there ever this desire do you ever want more from her because of your really how your relationship used to be and and is there a void mm -hmm. where your friendship once was to be honest i feel like so much happened in the time that we weren't communicating from you know me going through my IVF transfer and, and getting pregnant and having my baby and um like other people kind of filled that gap so mm -hmm. in the time that we were no longer friends like one of my closest cousins moved here who also went through ivf so like, it was like god knew yeah that that void was coming and he immediately mm -hmm. like he don't miss a moment he don't miss like don't we miss stopped being friends in august my cousin moved here in july so he like had stuff in order mm -hmm. to like help mend that now granted i have close relationships but there will never be another right and i'm okay with like I don't want to replace that right but there, there will never it will never be another and i think so much has happened that it's gotten to the point where those 15 years how it was was very very beautiful and if that's just what it was the yeah. fact that we were able to re i even say to the point that we reconciled and if at that moment we decided i'm glad we reconciled but this is it for me i'd also be okay that's so beautiful i don't i don't want to cry i know but I, I i would i would be okay I would be okay. Oh, yeah. I just, it makes me tear up because I feel like it's just so important for black women to see mm -hmm. you yeah. and how you feel about it. And because you, you don't sound like you're just saying this. You sound like this is a real thing that you, you really believe and yeah. feel. And I, I had to, I had to purge. Mm. I had to purge it. I had to grieve it. Mm. Um, I cried a lot. I talked to my daughter about navigating. Like she's about to be a freshman in high school, and so it's I'm, totally I'm, different in high school. I'm yeah. being mindful of like how am I operating in this space and how my daughter is watching me and how she's navigating female friendships. And this is also the godmother to her, and so she's witnessing. And so I, I had my feelings. I had my words yeah. with my therapist and in my journal. 
um but it's also showing me like I, i'm conflict averse i hate conflict i hate conflict <laughs> um but i i was felt i felt very proud of myself and being open to yeah. us conversing and and saying how i feel and having yeah. the difficult conversations and she she pulls that out of me so the fact that she's asking me well what do you want from this like how do you want to move like what do you want to do that's amazing thank you for asking yeah i think i feel like I, that's not something i i feel like that's intimacy right mm-hmm. in a friendship i feel like that's as, as somebody who moved around that's not something i got to really experience until mm-hmm. i got older mm-hmm. so i think that's i feel like that's really beautiful like mm-hmm. Shout out to y'all, because I also think, like, in terms of your, your your daughter, right? Like, there's so many things that I saw with my mother. She didn't have to tell me. I'm just going to learn from her actions, right? Yeah. And so for you to communicate and demonstrate, mm-hmm. this is what it is, sis. It's like, yeah. I think that's so beautiful. Things that, those are things we carry, I feel like. Um, is there anything you want to share? Like, I'm so grateful that you shared your story with us. Is there anything you want to share with Black women about breakups? Um there can be an opportunity for reconciliation if that's what you want Mm -hmm. i don't feel like it's an end-all be-all like you have that discernment and you know in the time that her and i reconnected and i saw her face to face like i told her i miss you and i've been holding on to that and i don't have to be prideful or act like it no nigga i miss you (laughs) (laughs) and period like and and you you don't have to feel the same so she was like okay like Thank you for saying that. Like, yeah. I genuinely missed you. Like, yeah. I was angry with you. I was hurt with you. And I was very proud that I could articulate my feelings. So, like, be okay with verbalizing those feelings. And even with that conversation, I didn't have any expectations of what it would look like after that. I needed to get that off my chest then and there. Granted, I was pregnant. I had the feelings. Yeah. But I was proud that I leaned into that that conflict. Yeah. And it was with one of the, the person who, outside of my husband, I am the closest to. Right. That means yeah. for me, like I feel like I can do that with anybody now because yeah. I've gotten that part out of I the feel way. Like when it's a safe place for you to do it, yeah. it's easy to do it. Because yeah. for me, the friends I broke up with, I realized they were not my safe place. Mm. And maybe at one point, but for a decade at least, they were not my safe place. So yeah. it was very difficult to have those conversations. So I think it's beautiful that you had a safe place then, and it sounds like you all have a mm. safe place now. So thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate it. Thank you, Faith. Okay. Okay.